Every now and then, someone claims to have solved one of physics' biggest questions. This time, a group of physicists say they've proved that the universe needs only one fundamental constant. All of physics, they say, everything we've ever measured can be explained by this one constant. Wait, what? And what is this constant? Let's have a look. In the international system of units, there are seven base units, second meter, kilogram, ampere, kelvin, mole, and candela. Pretty much everyone agrees that the latter four are strictly speaking unnecessary. They can be calculated from the first three. We just use them for historical reasons. The remaining three, second meter and kilogram, can be expressed by three fundamental constants. The speed of light, Planck's constant and some measure of time for which we currently use the frequency of a transition line of cesium atoms. The logic is this. From the cesium atom, you get a measure of time. Once you have time, you can use the speed of light to measure distances and then Planck's constant to measure masses and energies. These three fundamental constants could be different ones. But it seems that we need three, or do we? Some string theorists I've spoken to think that if only we found that theory of everything, which string theory could be, then there shouldn't be any fundamental constants. Everything should fall out of the mouths. Some of them think there should be one that's the tension of the string. Some think it's two, the tension of the string and the speed of light. But most physicists seem to think it's three units and therefore three fundamental constants that one needs. So what is it? Zero, one, two or three? Now a group of physicists say they've solved the problem. They did it by reformulating the question. What is the smallest number of independent measurement devices that one needs to describe everything in the universe? Their answer is just one, a clock. If you have a clock, they show, then you can also measure distances and masses without needing any other constants of nature. To measure distances, they use a clever construction originally suggested by Bill Unruh, the three-clock experiment. This makes use of Einstein's theory of special relativity to measure the length of, say, a rod using only clock readings. One observer sits at one end of the rod, the other on the other end. Both are not moving relative to the rod. The first has two clocks. He sends one clock to the observer on the other end. The observer reads it, synchronizes it with his third clock and sends that back to the first observer. The first observer then reads the third clock and his second clock that he kept. At this point, there are more clocks than conclusions. Don't worry if you didn't understand this. The details don't matter. The point is that in the end, you have three time readings and you can use this equation to measure the length of the rod. The important bit is that you don't need to know the speed of light for this. You only need the clocks. You use time to measure distances with your time unit. Concretely, you could then say, for example, the length of this rod is 5 billion times the inverse of that cesium transition frequency. To put this differently, you can now be late by a meter. And once you can measure both time and distances, you can also measure masses. For a quantum particle, this is obvious because the wavelength, so a distance, is directly related to the particle's mass. If you can measure one, you can measure the other. If you have heavier masses, that's unfeasible, but you can use something that's called a kibble balance. It's basically a device on which you put a mass and that's pulled down by gravity and that generates an electric current. Sounds complicated, but the nice thing is that for the kibble balance, you don't need to know anything about gravity or electricity. You just measure the number of electrons that are displaced. This means you measure the mass of the object in terms of the movement of the electrons, which is the distance. The bottom line is, they say, the only thing we need to measure everything is one time standard. This is what we currently use this cesium transition line for, but it could be some other time standard. And this time standard then is the only dimensionful constant of nature that you need to explain anything we've ever measured and will measure. Case closed.
not entirely, because they rely on being able to make arbitrarily precise clock measurements. If you take into account quantum gravity, though, and you push down to extremely small distances, then the precision of clocks breaks down in quantum noise. So their logic doesn't hold exactly in the range where, for example, string theory might become relevant. And then maybe strings will do away with the necessity for the time standard after all. I give this paper a 1 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. It's not a zero because of this quantum gravity issue that I think they should have discussed a bit more. Still, I think that this is a really interesting contribution to a very fundamental question. So next time someone tells you they don't have time, remind them that's all there is. I'm not the trusting kind. I don't like it if companies keep track of my whereabouts and God knows what else. That's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. With NordVPN, no one can spy on your data or track your whereabouts. And it also comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It doesn't just protect your privacy, it also makes your life easier. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations. For example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years because they don't comply with European privacy regulations. That can get really annoying. But well, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. You can make use of my special offer if you use the link nordvpn.com slash Sabine or the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.